Hi, James. How are Hi. you? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. All right. Everything. Yeah, everything works. Everything works. Everything is working. <laughs> all right. Perfect. So first of all, thank you for accepting this invitation to this podcast. I'm very excited because I've been following you for in LinkedIn. Oh, thanks. And you have like an amazing pictures. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Appreciate that. And one of my questions to start is like, um, I know you started photography, but uh, a little of background, why you went to that mining? Sure, that's a, it's a, that's a great question. So uh, I, I've been a photographer for 20 plus years and uh, the majority of my clients were, you know, weddings every weekend, families uh, and, and portraits. Uh, my wife and I owned and ran a successful portrait studio for a number of years here in Sudbury. And then I've always had mining clients uh, within the mix. So I always did a lot of commercial, industrial and mining. Um, and about 11 years ago, it came to a point in my career where it's not that I wasn't being challenged enough anymore, but it was starting to get repetitious. Mm -hmm. And at that point, with, uh, especially with the weddings, it, it wasn't fair to my clients, my wedding clients, if I wasn't 100% enthusiastic about doing it. So uh, my wife and I made the decision to stop doing weddings and, and, and close up the studio. And it really intrigued me to see if I could, because like, my wife asked me like, well, what would you photograph? And I said, well, you know, I've always enjoyed the mining and the industrial and the commercial. So maybe I'll try focusing on that. So we kind of came up with a game plan for about two years to see to see if it would be feasible to actually make a living off of it. Um, and after two years, if it wasn't, um, then we would, I would have sidelined to something else. I, I, I always wanted to do an industry. So mm -hmm. where, where I live, it was fortunate enough that we are in a mining hub. So uh, I was able to, you know, there was enough clients here to um, sustain me for the time um, to continue forward with it. Yeah. Yeah. I was, we live for a while in Norway, two years. And yeah, I know what you mean. Like uh, it's a lot of mining or it's more like a skilled workers down there. Now, yes. you know, yeah. yeah. And yeah. sometimes I feel that they are kind of hiding and people don't know about them. And I've been into, I interview uh, human resources, the cheese, um, uh, BP in, um, they call it minor mining. Right. Meaning, and yeah so much stuff that you don't even know that there is because some sometimes people are like oh mining is like oh they are destroying the, the everything and no it's like a, you you better be knowing but yeah ex yeah yeah exactly especially with the sustainable mining now and everything it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a, amazing the protocols and strategies that have been put in place especially in the last 10 years exactly yeah so uh, how long you've been photographing just mining? Uh, mining, strictly 100% mining. This is my 11th year. 11th year. Oh, yeah. Wow. 11th year. So. so I was reading how you described the shots of the picture. And I think you are very connected with, the, with everything. Can you follow and kind of make uh, some like how you choose that shot? Or... So, yeah. Um, you know. You know, I was having this discussion with my assistant the other day uh, in regards to, I've been explaining to him over the last few months how important communication is, uh, especially in any job, but even with this job as, as doing photography. And uh, because he was telling me, he used to work, uh, he was telling me that at one time they had a photographer come in and at his, uh, his old job and they photographed, um, you know, him working. And he said the photographer didn't say a single word to him. Mm. And I was like, well, how is that possible? And I mean, I guess it could be candid style. I, I don't know. But for me, the first thing is, is I have, when I go to a job and I have to photograph somebody, the first thing I will do is, A, I'll go introduce myself. And, you know, if they don't know who I am or don't know why I'm there, I will tell them, you know, why I'm there. We're going to photograph you doing your job. I will gain their confidence uh, usually within the first few minutes of, you know, that I will make them look good. I'm not going to depict them in a bad that's going to make them look like they're not working or that they're doing the job wrong. Uh, so the first thing I do is I ask them, well, what do you do? 
because I, I don't know. So they'll tell me a little bit about their job and then say, well, I'd love to see you do it. So if you show me what you do, then I will formulate a, a game plan and maybe a frame a, a, a picture in my head on what I think would be a good photograph that would depict you at work and everything looks good. So once I have them do the movements and what they're doing, I'll say, okay, so just freeze right there and I'll take a quick snapshot and I'll say, you know, is there anything in this image that where somebody would look at it and be like, okay, well, that's wrong. Or the, why would he be doing, or why would she be doing that? Or why would they be staying there? So I make sure, and safety wise, is all proper PPE on, does everything in the background look safe? And so I say, would this picture encapsulate what you do at your job if you didn't know what your job was? And they'll tell, and I said, and be honest with me, because if you don't like it, be honest with me and tell me right now, because you're not going to upset me. So I, my goal is to get an image that you like. So they'll tell you yes or no, or we'll make some fine adjustments. Then once that's done, I will say, okay, well, give me five minutes because now I have to come up with a game plan as far as how lighting it. If the lighting's not there, because sometimes the lighting's just not there. Through the naked eye, it looks good. Mm -hmm. But when you're trying to capture it on digital or back in the day when we were trying to capture it on film, you know, we had to highlight a few certain areas to, you know, you know, bring, you know, the separate the background from the subject, make sure the lighting of the subject's um you know the lighting is there and eye catching so that you as a viewer looking at the image would be drawn to that specific part yeah. of the image and fortunately for me that all comes back from my portrait and yeah. studio days because when we were creating like in a, a portrait uh and stuff like that we had to consider all those factors in their lighting composition all the basic key fundamentals of photography so all i did was just transfer all that knowledge into mm -hmm. the mining environment, industrial environment. Nothing's changed. It's just the environment's changed. You know, I'm not, I'm not photographing, uh, you know, weddings and outdoors and in nice churches. I'm underground, you know, a few thousand feet or, you know, in an industrial site. So, yeah. I think you, you are very excited doing that. It seems like a, you really... <laughs> you know, that's the other thing. Uh, I, I love my job. I love photographing this industry. Uh, I love being a creative where I get to create something. And yeah, you're right. I do get excited about it. And you know, if I, if I create a beautiful portrait of somebody, I get excited right then and there. I was like, Oh my God, this is going to look so good. Oh, let me show you, let me show you. And I'll show them the back of the camera. I said, this isn't the final image, but I just want to show you where I'm going with this. And it gets them excited. They're like, Oh, Oh, I, I, I do look good. Oh. And then, <laughs> and it just, it, it breaks the ice because that was the hardest thing coming into the mining industry as a photographer was a they didn't take me seriously b they were a little bit worried like why am i having my photograph taken and c they were worried about looking good like am, you know am i gonna get made fun of am i gonna look bad is this just you know so it was all those factors had to be um addressed before mm -hmm. we even before we even take a picture which is another reason why I brought my assistant on a few years ago, uh, not the recent one, McKeon now, but my other one, Brent, was so that when he's setting up the equipment, I have time to go talk to the, my subject and the people and let them know who I am and what I'm doing and gain their confidence so that by the time we're done the shoot, we're best friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So in these years, I bet you learn a lot of stuff. <laughs> so what was like a mind changing for you even though that you already have your your experience in in wedding and everything what was a something that you said i was totally this is totally new for me and even though like uh, you have the, the photography and everything that's a good question <laughs> that's a really good question give me a second i gotta think about that <laughs> um yeah what's new i i think I think it came down, it comes down to the environment. It's a very challenging environment sometimes. Um, that and meeting the expectations of what some of my clients will have. And the hard part, and the thing that was a challenge for me that I didn't expect that I had to address was um, a client wants a specific image of a specific thing in a specific environment, and they have it in their head that when I get there, I just can't do it. And it has mm -hmm. nothing to do with my skills. It's like, okay, well, there's not enough room. They're not like, there's, there's some other element. And I have to address that and tell them, 
I, I can't do that specific image. It's, it's a great idea and I love it, but just for what it is, I can't do it. And in a way I had to get over the fact that like, okay, were they going to think I'm incompetent? But then I have to sit there and say, I, I use the term, it's my professional opinion that I can't get what you're going to, what you want. So I can spend an hour trying, knowing that we're not going to get the quality level that you want. But I have a few ideas that I can do something different, but it will still kind of give you the idea of what you were trying to go for. And again, you know, back to the last question, it really just comes down to communication. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how much communication you have to have. You have to have the skills of communication. You have to be able to collaborate, talk, express, listen, right? Uh, especially listening to what your client wants. And uh, that's the biggest, the photography part, and I've said this for years, not when I was learning, but I've said it over the last years now, the photography part's easy. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do photography. It's a, I don't want to say it's a very simple trade, but you know, with the cameras and technology, yeah, you can pick up a camera and you can create awesome images. But it's the communication and the business and the marketing aspect that really uh, that sets yourself apart. That's the challenge. And, and I bet you that the skill that you already kind of very good in that is you are taking a picture of a human being. And, and if you are able to let that human being like a relax and be themselves in that moment, I think they, the picture has like a soul. <laughs> it, no, that's exactly, you got to evoke some sort of emotion. In, in the most part, you just want the client to like the image not even like it. You want the client to love the image I mean, and not necessarily the client who hired me, but the person I'm photographing. Mm -hmm. And I usually will not, I will try, I will not leave until they see the image and they're happy with it. And I'll ask them. I said, you know, like you tell me if you're not, if you don't think you look good, you need to tell me right now and we'll fix it. We'll do something different. But I want them to know so that when they go home, they're like, Oh, I can't wait to see my image. I can't mm -hmm. wait. That was, that was so much fun. Yeah. And it, it took, it's taken years to get there. Uh, I used to be a really nervous photographer. Uh, this was way back when uh, I would get very nauseous uh, before a shoot because I'd be so nervous and I'd be, I'd be worrying about things that were out of my control. I was just mentioning this issue. When I had wedding on, when I had a wedding on Saturday, on Thursday, I would get nauseous about the weather. <laughs> oh, I hope it's not raining. Like, what are we going to do if the weather's bad? something completely out of my control that I could not ever change would be the weather. Yet I would be worrying about it so much. And over the years, because of repetition of practice, failures, lots of failures, you know, you'll try something and it just didn't quite work out. Or, uh, but over the years doing it so much that I'm not, uh, it's been, it's rare that I get into a situation where I get nervous before anything that I photograph now, because I don't worry about it. I was like, ah, oh, let's just wait and see what happens. We'll wait till we get there. You know, let's just see. And we'll roll with it. That's the only thing you can do. So we'll roll with it. So. Yeah. Uh, growing. How you see yourself? Like uh, what is going to be keeping you keep doing photography? You, you have any plans to grow yeah. in? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I'm kind of winding down, in, you know, in the next 10 years. I, at least I'd like to think so. But part of me. Part of me thinks that I don't think I'll ever be able to do that because uh, I think I'm always going to have to at least create something. But my goal, besides, well, if 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 the pandemic, if COVID didn't happen, uh -huh. it would have been it would have been a lot more international travel. Mm. I have I have countries that I'd like to visit, and I have clients that I'd like to work with, and I have mining equipment that I would like to personally just see with my own eyes, let alone photograph it. Um, so I, I'm hoping to still do that. It's starting now, but I'm hoping the next five years that I get to travel to, to more countries because even though like the mining is different country to country and mm -hmm. so there's uh, lots of different forms and types of mining and I haven't seen it all yet. So that's, that's my goal in the next, uh, in the next few years. I do have a couple other industries that I wouldn't mind dabbling in. I wouldn't mind dabbling in agriculture. Hmm. Just, but uh, again, I'm not done with, what I want to do here. I, I've, I've done a lot in my mining career uh, in the photography aspect, but I'm probably almost halfway to where I want to be. Do you see yourself in like a, a team? Like are you, you was just the brain and your team 
kind of handle everything because I bet you you get full yeah. hands with everything. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought about I thought about that. Uh, I thought about maybe working for one client specifically. Um, my fear is that it'll get repetitious. Yeah. Whereas right now I'm everything's even though it's somewhat repetitious, uh, you know, the mind, you know, mine, you know, this mind looks like that mind and this machine looks like this machine. Uh, it's still different. Everything's still mm -hmm. different. And I'm still trying to create, even though let's say I'm shooting this brand of scoop and then I'm shooting this brand of scoop, I'm trying to make the images completely different so that they don't know it was actually me who photographed both because I want to keep it fair to my client that they're not just getting a repetitive image of, my other client so uh it hasn't gotten there yet so i'm still yeah i'm, I'm still excited and enjoying it so amazing amazing any funny story or creepy story that you have <laughs> i mean there's like you know funny things happen and stuff like that um you know no real i mean creepy stories is just like environment like you know yeah. um you know you know rattlesnakes on site that you're like Oh, the, the dead rattlesnake right there and like why didn't you tell me you had rattlesnakes here because i've been walking around here and they're like oh they don't normally come out at this time of year and i'm like apparently they do come out because there's a dead one right there you know just uh yeah i mean just just typical travel it's mostly travel really yeah that's all travel yeah. um i'm really excited for the what what's really gotten me excited over the last two years is the next generation of trades and mining mm -hmm. the young the younger generate the younger generation that are that are coming in because they're they add a different perspective coming from a younger generation and they're excited they're so mm -hmm. excited right and so i i'm really looking forward to that and enjoying uh, my shoots right now with the younger generation and the new uh, generation of trades that are coming in so i'm really looking forward to that and and is they contact you like because you already everybody knows you already i bet you so it's like a, the clients come to you or is a specific time for the mining why the mining mm -hmm. want to be having pictures you know what i mean like yeah so that's that's a good question and uh i haven't found a pattern yet as far as time you know when i first started it's like when i the first year that i started it was like june july and half of august i had nothing no calls, no nothing. And as I go, like, oh, well, uh, okay, that could be a bust, you know, and then it picked up in September. And then the next year, same thing. I had June, July, nothing. So my wife was like, well, next year, let's take vacation in June, July, because we got nothing. I was like, perfect. And then the following year, the next year, we were booked June and July. So we mm. couldn't take, and it's been like that. It's been sporadic. So I haven't found an actual, when I'm busy, when I'm not, it has been changing from year to year. Now, when a client needs me is, it depends on the client. Um, a new junior company or mm. will, will, will hire me just to get stuff out for their annual reports and their financial statements so that they can attract investors to their, um, um, to their company. Mines will usually contact me every two, three years just to update, uh, you know, update their brand, update their people. There's, there's turnaround in the people, there's turnaround in equipment. And um, so they'll contact me or if something new and big is happening. Um, they're getting, a, they're expanding or they've got a new, new, new machines and stuff like that. And then the manufacturing companies, they will hire me whenever there's like a new machine because mm -hmm. they need to get, they need to get stuff. It really comes down. It's all about marketing, 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 marketing. And the better quality images that people, that companies have and people have in their marketing, you know, the more eye catching the image is, the few more seconds that somebody will actually look at it and then maybe read the headline and then read the tagline and then read read more mm. and i've been saying that because especially in a day where everybody's just sitting there doing this mm -hmm. scrolling up scrolling up scrolling up i mean we're bombarded with thousands of images a day we see images every day on every screen that we look at so you want that one where you're flipping through and you're like oh oh that's kind of cool and then they'll read it or look at it um, so that's where that eye catching images and the high impact images, uh, come into, come into play. Interesting. Do you find the key to do that? Like, no, it's no, the only thing I haven't found the key. Um, what I think has worked for me is that, mm. I mean, you said you've been following me for a long time. 
So you've seen my posts. I, I try to post at least once a day if I can. Oh, sorry, I got a cat here. I try to, yeah, he's, his bed's right beside him in my office. He watches me while I work. So uh, I try to post something every day. Um, so that they see, you see my name, you see mining photog every day. Um, and I've said it before is that like what I do today is for business two years from now. Mm. And I learned this back when I had my studio because, uh, I would blog every session that I had, I put a blog and a write up and then somebody called me for a session and they said, I've been following you for two years now, but we need photography now. And your name obviously was the first one I thought of because I've been seeing your name every day, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they, but it was two years ago that they mm -hmm. first saw me. So that's why I use that term. So I like to say, I'm not the best photographer because there's far better photographers out there. I'm just one, I, I make myself seen. So I got you gotta be very active. I'm active on social media. I'm active on LinkedIn. Um, is it, that just comes down to branding one on one and marketing. I mm -hmm. mean, people ha people have to see you. If they don't see you, then they don't know you. And if they don't know you, they won't hire you. Mm -hmm. And that's for any company, any company, mm -hmm. which is why I think social media is even more important, uh, especially just stuff like Instagram. Um, I, I think a lot of companies need to start getting more on Instagram and in, in the social media aspects about showing their company because their competitors are already doing it. And they might get to the point where we need to, but their competitors have shown more. I mean, it's a real simple, fast, inexpensive way to get your company known on a different level than LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And all that new generation that's coming into the positions of purchasing and, uh, you know, and hiring and even working all come from that social media um, generation. That's where they find all their information, whether it's LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, you know, Instagram or Facebook. Um, I've seen a lot of companies start. I, I always give, I'll give a, I'll give a little spiel on why I think it's important and they get all gung ho and then they'll, they'll post for like a week or two straight and then I'll go check their Instagram feed. And it's like, well, they haven't posted anything in three months. And it's like, Oh, that's even worse. That's even worse than not starting to begin with. <laughs> because the social media is one of those things that if you're going to start, you need to keep with it. But if you stop, what happens is if somebody starts following your company and they're like watching your stuff and watching every move, and then all of a sudden you stop posting, those people are going to wonder why. Are you not busy anymore? Did something happen to the company? Like, so it's it's one of those things where you just you have to be you just have to be on it and on it. And that's what I've and and that's what I've done when I started. I've just it's it's been just every day as much as you can. Try to put some try to do something for your business every day. Whether that's sending an email, replying to an email, adding a contact on LinkedIn, posting on social media, commenting on somebody's post. Every day you should do something to further your business, no matter how small it is. And then over time, over time, it just builds up. It mm -hmm. takes a while. It does take a while, but over time, it just builds up. Like when I say I've, had, I've been doing this for 11 years, like it's, it's still like, man, it only feels like three. <laughs> it only feels like three, you know? Yeah. Another different question. So sure. what is the virtue that, 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 that you value most in a, in a person? Sorry, can you repeat that? Yes. What is the virtue that you value most in others? Honesty. Just be honest. Yeah, honesty. Honesty and um, uh, what's the other word I was looking for? Sincere. Yeah. That's one thing. And, even, and, and, yes. with my, and with my business too, that's done. I, I, I actually, did you know that it was National Entre Entrepreneur's Day today? No, I happy, didn't know. Happy, happy National Entrepreneur's Day today. So happy. I wrote a little I wrote a little thing today about things I've learned over the years about, you know, running your own business and stuff like that. And one of those ones was just be honest. Uh, just be honest with your with all your clients, be honest with all your staff, just be honest with them because like when you're be transparent with your process with everything. Exactly. Oh, that, I like that word. I'm gonna use that one. I, that's what I was looking for. So that's the other thing when I do my little spiel to the clients. I I want to be transparent and let them know everything so they don't question anything that I'm doing. They know exactly what I'm doing. And that puts people at ease. Yeah. You know, I noticed that you really like to, um, you are like a storyteller. Like yeah. I think you, you, I, because I was reading how you was explaining one of the pictures that you took. And I said, I think he has something there that is, that you connect with the worlds that you are putting together. So I think, Soon, maybe you can 
have more like that because I think people if, are drawn to that kind of story, you know, to connect. Yeah, yeah. That that comes back to again. That all comes back to the my early days when you know we would blog, I would blog. So if I had a wedding or a portrait or a family session, I would blog an image and I tell the story of that day and. Mm -hmm. Um, I was never, I'm not a writer and I was never a storyteller, but the way I approached it, uh, was because people ask me like, well, I can't write, I can't, you know, I was like, it's so, it's, it's so easy to write about what you just did. And they're like, well, how I said, just pretend you're sitting across the table from your best buddy having a coffee and they say, Hey, how was your day today? And you say, oh, my day was great. You know, I had a good session with blah, blah, blah. The kid was funny, da, 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 da. And, you, I just, and just be honest, just tell what happens. Type it out. Don't worry about grammar. Don't worry about spelling. Just type your thoughts really quickly that you're telling your friend. Then after that, go fix your grammar. But that's your story. Mm -hmm. So I used, to do, I used to do that for every session. So I always, I find now, like, if you're going to post a picture, you should tell a little bit story about it because it gives people a better idea of, that image instead of just saying here's an image and you know just a, not even no caption but just like had a great shoot like don't talk about it because you, somebody can look at the image well five different people can look at the image and five people can come up with five different stories so you kind of want to steer them in a little bit of a way of that story mm -hmm. so and that's how i look at it so whenever i post an image i just just talk about it from the heart you just this is what it is yeah mm. but you're right it's it, it, it is storytelling because when we were when i was shooting weddings it was we used to shoot the whole day but we tell the story from the bride's home all the way to the end and we tell the story using images i mean we used to shoot hundreds of images and their album would be like this thick and it was a, <laughs> and it was it was a story um so we kind of you know like another thing uh, like a lot you know another thing people don't think about when it comes to storytelling and just composition of an image, when you look at an image, you look from left to right. The majority of the time you will look at an image from left to right, because that's what we're used to when we're reading. We read from left to right. So what you want to do is you want your subject in the right side so that you start at the left side of the image and boom, you come into your subject and you stop. Whereas if your subject's on the left side and you start at your subject and then you go to the right, it just, you kind of lose focus on it. So I, so I try to put all my subjects on the right side of <laughs> right side of the image. And now that I said that, if you go back to a lot of my images, you will see the majority of them are looking at it from left to right, because that's all part of storytelling. Mm. So, so fascinated. Like they, every time that you do something, you learn something. Like, oh, constantly. I, it's amazing. And, and like, like you said, like you already said so many stuff that, that, they resonate with me and, and it's gonna I can can I add something else in my <laughs> in my repertoire <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah always learning I, I'm you kind of have to and the best way of learning is making mistakes and the only way you make mistakes is if you try mm -hmm. uh, so you know another one of the things that I've always said was uh, it's not that I'm good I just try it until I get it right you know, and uh, that came back when I used to do Photoshop for the studio I worked for and, uh, and my, my first phot photographic job with my mentor. Um, and uh, he would come in and say, oh, my God, that looks awesome. Like, as if you figured it out, that's so you're so good. And I'd be like, yeah, but you don't realize that it just took me an hour of trying 40 different things <laughs> before I finally got it. And the same thing with my, you know, back in the day when I first you know, when I first moved in with my wife and we were setting up the whole entertainment system and all that and all the wires and. I finally got everything set up and everything's working. And she's like, oh my God, like as if you figured that out. And I was like, well, yeah, I tried like 20 different scenarios <laughs> and none of them worked. This one did. So, <laughs> exactly. so yeah, it's not that you're smart. You just try things until you get it right. You know, so, but you're always learning, always, always learning to this day, still learning. And I'm still learning. I'm still learning business. This is, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's business first and then photography second. I mean, my photography is a product of my business, but Without the business, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, and the other thing is, I don't know what else I would do, <laughs> which is why I have to make a go of this. <laughs> it is something in, in the mining industry that you really, really want to do and, and you are not 
Jet doing it? Like, you know what I, yeah. You know what I'd love to do? If hmm. somebody wanted to pay me to do this. <laughs> yeah. I would like to go to other countries and just photograph the people. Just portraits. Uh, and not do, you know, and that's all I'd be focusing on was just the people and a portrait and whether that and, and just to, across the world to show the different people, a little bit of story about each person I photograph, almost like a photojournalistic style without having to create a whole image library of everything else for a client. That would be the ultimate, uh, that would be mm. the ultimate job. Everything in mining, like um, mining from people from Mexico. They mining I would like, in Mexico. I would, yeah, but I'd just like to photograph the people. Uh, that's, people, that's, people. A, that's my favorite. My favorite aspect of this job is photographing people, is mm. the, pe the people portraits. That's the, my favorite thing to photograph is the people. I love everything else, but the favorite is the people. So when I have to go create a portrait of somebody, uh, yeah, that's, I'm like, perfect. Yeah. Remember when, when in, in old days, they feel like, uh, the photo would, was bad and came, something of the soul. It would, like, it would steal their soul. <laughs> it would steal their soul. Yeah. Uh, interesting. That's where the conversation and communication would come in beforehand, right? I have to convince <laughs> them, like, I'll give it back though. <laughs> <laughs> Just for this shot and then yeah, yeah. you can have it. But yeah yeah something else that you want to add james no i like i have i do have bucket lists of specific countries that i'd like to go to and specific machines just because uh you know i've always wanted first some of the countries i've always wanted to go there but now because of the mining industry and i would like to just see the like i'd just like to see it but uh i again i, I have a bucket list but uh it's going to take a little bit of work to get there but but I've been, I've, I've been fortunate enough to travel to a lot of great countries already. So. Have you ever photographed uh, people in Mexico from the mining? Yep. No. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What, what state? I was in Chihuahua, Mexico um, years ago. And then I was in uh, Mulatos. Guanajuato, maybe. Uh, that was for Alamos Gold. I was there three years ago. Mm. I love Mexico. I go back to Mexico any day to photograph industry yeah there's a lot of beautiful stuff down there culture and everything yep i agree i agree so i think it's 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 everything so it well, was good. very very good very good stuff hey, well, James. thank you for very much for reaching out to me uh sorry it took so long but uh once you emailed me back it's like yeah i got time perfect <laughs> we, 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 we yeah, i was this. waiting for you i say okay when he said late fall what do you mean like a september october or november and <laughs> no this was like this was like the per this was like the perfect time that's why i was able to get it done we were able to get it done right, right there mm -hmm. yeah. yeah okay james thank you very much well, well thank you very much and you know what if you want to do a follow-up in a few years that'd be great perfect or well, maybe sooner why not <laughs> perfect yeah no problem well thank you very much thank you have you a have great day you have yourself a good day you All too right. bye bye, bye.